Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to find the equation of a line which is perpendicular to a plane. And there's a few things that are given. First of all, they give us a point on the plane, defined by that right there. And they tell us that the line must go through that point. Also, they give us two vectors which are in the plane. And so they're defined by the vector A and by vector B. So when we have the two vectors that are in the plane, if we then take the cross product of those two vectors, we'll get a third vector which is perpendicular to the plane. And so that means that the line will be parallel to that vector. So that's how we're going to approach that. So what we need to do then first is take the cross product of those two vectors to get a third vector which is perpendicular to the plane, which will then be parallel to the line that we're looking for. All right, let's do that. So A cross B. That is equal to, here's the determinant of i, j, and k. That the components of a, which are 4, negative 1, and 0, and the components of b, which are 1, 2, and 0. So this is equal to i times negative 1 times 0 minus 0 times 2. Minus j times... And here I have 4 times 0, which is 0, minus 0 times 1, which is 0, and then plus k. And here we get 4 times 2, which is 8, minus a negative 1 times 1, which becomes a positive 1, like this, which means that the cross product of a cross b is simply equal to 0i plus 0j plus 9k. So that gives us a vector perpendicular to the plane. Let's call that vector C. Now we want to find the normal unit vector. And the normal unit vector will be equal to the perpendicular vector like C divided by its own magnitude. So in this case, that would be vector C, which is 0i plus 0j plus 9k, and divided by the magnitude, which of course it looks simple, that's equal to 9, which means that the normal unit vector is 0 in the i direction, plus 0 in the j direction, plus 1 in the k direction. And of course, you can see that the magnitude of that is indeed 1, and so this can also be written as 0, 0, 1. There's our normal unit vector, which means that if the k component of our vector changes by 1, the x and the y components change by zero. Now we need an equation that goes to that point. So that means we're going to take one point, call it point one, and that's going to be equal to two, two, and zero. Now we're going to define a second point on that line because every line is defined by two points. And we can do that by adding the components of the unit vector to the original point. So if we do that, we get a second point, we get 2 plus 0, that gives us 2, 2 plus 0, that gives us 2, and 0 plus 1, that gives us 1. And so there's a second point. Notice that the x component changes by 0, the y component changes by 0, and the z component changes by 1 according to our unit vector. So now when we define a line, we can do that using the parametric equations, which means that we can say that x can be defined as a point on the plane, which is 2, plus how much it changes when our parametric variable changes. So let's define our parametric variable t, and it changes by this amount. So that would be equal to plus 0t. Our y can be defined as a point on the plane 2 plus how much it changes, which is 0t. And z can be defined as starting at 0 plus how much it changes if our parametric variable changes. And it changes 1 every time t changes by 1. So we have 1 times t. In other words, if we want to simplify that, we can say that x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2, and z is equal to 0 plus 1t, or simply t. 
And these are the three parametric equations of the variable t that define the line, which means that the line will be in the xy plane because x and y doesn't change, and it will change in the z direction according to the parametric variable t. And that's how we find the equation of a line that goes through a point which is perpendicular to a plane that's defined by two vectors which lie within that plane. And that's how it's done.